morning, pray them all day long. Feel like praising, praising him. Oh, tell me why don't you pray the Lord while you have a chance. Hallelujah. Why don't you pray the Lord while you have a chance? Pray them in the morning, pray them all day long. Feel like praising, praising him. Oh, yes, I feel like praising, praising him. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel like praising, praising him. Oh, I pray them in the morning, pray them all day long. I feel like praising, praising him. Oh, yes, I feel like praising, praising him. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel like praising, praising him. Glory. Oh, I pray them in the morning, pray them all day long. Like praising, praising him. Oh, yes, I feel like praising, praising him. Glory. Oh, I feel like praising, praising him. Hallelujah. Oh, I pray them in the morning. Pray them all day long. I feel like praising, praising him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord tonight, saints. It's certainly a privilege to uh, be able to praise the Lord, amen, and to glorify him and to thank him for all that he has done for us. Certainly his many blessings that he has given unto us is, goes beyond, of course, our ability to explain, amen. Our imaginations cannot even fathom the things that God has prepared for them that love him. And certainly, amen, his love is better than pure gold. Praise the Lord, amen. Amen. In fact, there's nothing really that we can compare to it. Praise the Lord. There's nothing that's been created that can really, um, how can I say, that, that is designed to even to compare to what God has, of course, given to them or has prepared for them that, amen, love him and is then are willing to make the sacrifice to be what the Lord would have them to be. And certainly, I'm just so glad that, amen, there's somebody that loves my Jesus. Amen. There's a safe haven in the earth that we can go to. Praise the Lord. There's a rock that we can run into. Amen. His name is Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. He's better. He's better than any rock that you can ever imagine. Praise God that you can run to him and you are safe. Praise the Lord. And one of these days we will be eternally safe. And as much as we will tangibly possess that which God has given to us through the plan of salvation that he has, of course, provided for the church, we're going to receive it. For the Bible said, when we see him, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Can the church say amen? So as we look to God today, we can certainly trust in him and never doubt. And I don't know why these songs are coming to my mind, but he shall surely bring us out. Amen. He's going to bring us out of this world into something that I can't even imagine. But I don't know about you. I'm looking for it. Praise the Lord. Because when we wake up in the morning and we got to deal with the same mundane routine things of life. At some point, you people ought to get tired of dealing with the same stuff. Amen. All of us want to change at some point. Praise the Lord. And certainly, I want to change. Amen. For the better. And God has been doing that day by day as we serve the Lord. He's been giving us changes in our lives that uh, has proved better for us than anything that anybody can ever imagine. And so, we thank God for what he's going to do. And I want us, if you would be so kind, to govern yourself accordingly for this funeral. Praise the Lord. She was a fantastic woman, saved woman that loved the Lord, has been saved practically all her life, all the way from her very, very young years. And uh, so we lost a great soldier. Praise the Lord. Went on uh, to sleep in Jesus. And certainly she is precious and she will be missed. Praise the Lord. But that's the way of us all. Amen. If the Lord shall tarry, all of us will fall asleep at some point. But we just want our life, as one song rather, to speak for us, amen, and for people to remember, amen, what we have lived. Can the church say amen? Hallelujah. And I just want to make sure that when I get out of here, don't nobody have to tell no lies about me. Can the church say amen? Hallelujah. Are you with me? Let me get off that. But amen, I want the truth to be told. Hallelujah. 
because you know how people are nowadays. But that's not our subject tonight. But I want to thank God for what he's given us, and that is the spirit of adoption. I want to call your attention, saints, if you'd be so kind. Uh, call your attention to the first chapter of the book of Ephesians. Praise the Lord. I don't intend on being before you very long tonight. Hallelujah. But I believe the Lord does have something to say to us that it will encourage us and to show the great preparation that God has uh, done for those that are called by his name. So let's go now to Ephesians chapter number 1, verses numbers 5. Then also if we get um, St. John chapter number 3 and verses number 6 in your hearing. This is all you will need tonight. When you have it, you can say amen. amen. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Let's go now to St. John chapter number 3. And we're interested in, I guess we might as well read verses number five also. He says, and Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee that thou must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof. Canst not know from whether it cometh, whether it goeth, so is every one that is born of the Spirit. Heavenly Father, Lord, tonight, we thank you, my God, for your words that you, my God, have just so wonderfully given unto us tonight. Lord, we thank you, my God, for this great opportunity, Lord, and this great revelation that you have given us in Jesus Christ tonight. Speak, Lord, words of life to us. Encourage us. Make us into what you would have us to be, O God. Let your words be a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our pathway, O God, right now. Lord, we pray one for another, Lord. Let the anointing of God flow into this building right now. My God, severally divide to each and every one of the children of God the needs that we have. Encourage us, O God, and build us up. Make us into what you want us to be. A holy people, my God, hallelujah, separate from sinners. Father, Lord, that you might be glorified, O Lord, that your will would be done. That holiness, O oh God, will be our watchword and song for what you've given us. My God, is far better than anything the world could ever offer. We ask right now in the blessed name of Jesus, we pray. And let the church say in Jesus' name, Jesus. amen. I want to read again, if you will be so kind. I guess we can read verses numbers four with it also. You don't have to stand. But I just want to read it in your hearing because this is going to set the tenor tonight as to the thought that we want to uh, put across in your hearing. It says, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blemish, excuse me, without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children, by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. I want to talk to us tonight, saints, from this thought, the adoption of children by Jesus Christ. The adoption of children by Jesus Christ. I want us to know tonight that everything that God has designed in the church, it is, without a shadow of a doubt, has been purposed for an ultimate end. You see, saints, God does not do anything without a reason behind it. Everything that God does, he has a purpose and an ultimate end to what he is designing to do. In this particular chapter, it is seven particular blessings that God has before ordained and or designed that he would give unto the church. One of the blessings that we have, of course, read in verses numbers five is the predestination of God. That is, has to do, Sister Hannah with him predetermining beforehand what he desired. What God predetermined beforehand 
and or desired beforehand according to his foreknowledge is that he wanted to have some children. That's what the scripture says here tonight. That he wanted to have something that belongs to him. Now we all understand that God is a spirit. Praise God. So it is an impossibility for him to birth, as it were, natural children, if you please, because he is a spirit. We all understand, of course, that what happened with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and as much as he overshadowed um, her womb, she being uh, with child, praise God, but that was a sp of a spiritual sort. Can the church say amen? amen. But God here is, is, is explaining to us tonight that God wants something that is his. He wanted some spiritual children that he can say was his, that belonged to him. And so there had to be a process by which he received that which he desired. And in this particular text, it is called adoption. The term adoption has to do with taking that or choosing that that was actually not yours and bringing it into relationship with you. And this is what God has done with us in as much as you and I who are, um, how can I say, we were not born of the natural seed, a man of Israel. We were not natural uh, of the natural lineage. He brought us in, amen, through a course that was different, amen, from the natural seed, amen, of those who were born, as it were, with rights to, amen, the relationship with God himself or with Jehovah in that day, praise the Lord, and Jesus, of course, in our day. And so this is what he's done is that he has actually brought that which was not his and brought us into the church through, amen, an adoption process. And when we deal with the term adoption as it pertains to the scripture, is that when God brought forth what is called the spirit, amen, of adoption, which is the baptism of the Holy Ghost into our lives, when we receive the baptism of the spirit, amen, hallelujah, when we spoke in tongues, the spirit of God gives utterance, it is called in one place the actual spirit of adoption. Can the church say amen? Amen. So what God did was that he saved our souls. Amen. Our spirit man was reborn, and then he temporarily took our bodies into his family. Praise God. And two, he gets what he wants. That is why Jesus Christ tells Nicodemus that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit, saints, is spirit. Can the church say amen? There are two different types of birth. Amen. Nobody, praise God, can be adopted or can be, amen, how can I say, nobody can be adopted or brought, amen, into the family of God, amen, except they receive the spirit of adoption. Amen. Nobody can be brought into the uh, household of faith except, hallelujah, they receive a different birth. And a lot of people today, I found out, they are not actually saints concerned about, praise God, hallelujah, truly being changed. Praise the Lord. They seem, saints, this to want to have, amen, what the world calls relationship with God. But in order for you to have a relationship with God, you have to have the spirit of adoption. You have to have his spirit, thank God, hallelujah, that saves your soul, praise the Lord, and allows your body to be a temporary occupant of the family of God. And to praise God, this mortal Praise the Lord, puts on immortality. And this, my God, this body that we are in right now, praise the Lord, Brother Phil, has got to change. Can the church say amen? And that's one of the promises that God has designed is that eventually, saints, hallelujah, these bodies that we are in, that he has adopted into his family, eventually, thank God, we're going to get out of these bodies and we're going to receive, thank God, our glorified body. Can the church say amen? That's the beauty of the spirit of adoption is that, hallelujah, we, may, we go through what is called, amen, hallelujah, sanctification and a metamorphosis takes place in our lives. Praise God, hallelujah, but we first must have what the spirit, what the spirit, what the scriptures call, excuse me, the spirit of adoption that comes into our life. Praise God and meet and reforms us and changes us. Uh, this is actually a blessing that God gives the church. Uh, and he predestinated beforehand 
hand before the foundation of the world that he would have somebody, thank God, that was his. I want you to know, amen, nobody wants to be alone all the time, even God himself. Amen. He wants something that is his. The amen, Sister Young, that he has put his stamp of approval on, and that's what he does for us saints. When he calls us out, hallelujah, he comes into our life, praise the Lord, and we are reborn. Our spirit man is reborn. That is, our mind is changed. Thank God he takes something that is his, that nobody else, thank God, can take hold of, praise the Lord. I like the way Bishop used to say, praise the Lord, that he bought us lock, stock, and barrel. God got everything when he got us saints. And I want you to know, praise the Lord, he knew exactly what he was getting. Praise the Lord. He didn't get the good end of the bargain, praise the Lord, because he has to do all the work to get me the way he wants me to be. But I thank God today that I have this right to be, hallelujah, adopted by Jesus Christ. And when God, hallelujah, saved us saints, praise God, he adopted us, hallelujah, and he made my body a member of his church. Thank God, hallelujah. The body, that's why Paul said in one place, know ye not that your members is the body of Christ. Can the church say amen? He was literally talking about our bodies. That's the reason why he said, therefore mortify the deeds of your body. Hallelujah. People don't want to talk about that no more. Hallelujah. Amen. Feel they don't want to talk about telling the flesh what it can't do any longer. Uh, but I thanks thanks be to God today. Uh, amen. I had one type of birth, praise the Lord. Uh, but I got a new birth today, and I can tell, amen, the old man know that you're not going to do that today. You're going to do what, amen, hallelujah, the spirit of adoption wants you to do. Uh, isn't that a wonderful thing tonight that God has allowed us, saints, uh, amen, to receive this. Uh, Thank God, great spirit that he has given unto us. It reforms, it reshapes us. It is a blessing, thank you, Holy Ghost, from the Lord. This world, saints, is not our home. It's not our final resting place. It's not where the Lord, hallelujah, wants us to end up. Amen, you know with me here. He did all of these things in his mind before the foundation of the world. He had already determined that he was going to get what he wanted. On it. And thanks be to God, hallelujah, he showed up and now he's getting what he wants. And now I'm being changed, hallelujah. Every day I wake up, praise the Lord. Thank God, I'm hallelujah. I'm walking in a newness of life. Why? Because I have the spirit of adoption down on the inside. And the spirit of adoption, hallelujah, tells me, thank God, you have a new way of living. Amen. I believe this tonight, saints. Amen. Hallelujah that the saints of God uh, those of us who know the Lord uh, we ought to be happy you know why uh, amen hallelujah because we have a new family praise the Lord Hallelujah. Thank God we switched. Thank God for one family. This is not talking about, thank God, a natural family that we came out of. Thank God, hallelujah, because in actuality, amen, before we came to the Lord, saints, we were actually, praise God, orphans. We were actually, hallelujah, amen, spiritually speaking, we were out in a field, saints, and our neighbor was not cut, our joints was not soupled. Amen, hallelujah. We were not taken care of but thanks be to God through Jesus Christ that the Lord picked us up and said look what I found then he sent the baptism of the Holy Ghost that's what Paul is making the point here amen that he has done this what is called in this scripture the spirit of adoption hallelujah thank God brought me into a place and now I have all the benefits of knowing him where a lot of people out in the world saints they don't have the benefits that you and I have but thanks be to God I'm an heir tonight and a joint heir with Jesus Christ thank God I'm no longer on the outside looking in thank God but I'm on the inside thank God I'm on the inside of what he's given us so now what Paul is telling us that we have these blessing saints we ought to walk worthy of it we ought to walk like we appreciate what he's done for us because this world saints 
uh, is constantly bishop dragging. Uh, thank God in our chariot wheels is trying. Uh, thank God to pull us back into uh, an old way of living. But the Bible said, uh, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Uh, the Bible said, set your affections on things above. Uh, the Bible said, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are pure, uh, whatsoever things are a good report, think on those things. Uh, think on the things, hallelujah, of what God is going to give you. The Bible said, Hallelujah. The Bible said, I have not seen neither as ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of a man. Uh, the things that God has hallelujah, prepared uh, for them that love him. Don't you know God loves us? Uh, thank God loves us so much uh, that he adopted us in when he saw us. Uh, the Bible said he's like a father that pities his children. Uh, I'm so glad tonight that God, uh, mm, thank God, has pity upon me. Uh, when he sees me, praise the Lord, uh, he says, that's somebody who needs some help huh? so he reaches down unto us saints huh? he picks us up praise the Lord huh? he wraps us he swallows us huh? thank God in his arm hallelujah he says this is my child huh? and if the world don't want him I want him praise the Lord huh? if don't nobody else love him I love him hallelujah I want to nurture them and hold them huh? and keep them and make them and mold them huh? I'm going to take care of their needs every day of their life huh? and I'm so glad tonight uh, then I got the spirit of adoption uh, they got down in my soul hallelujah I got a hallelujah and so this I think sometimes uh, we need to hear this praise the Lord because uh, this world sometimes makes us feel like uh, we are all by ourselves but I want you to know uh, the song that right, says share never alone uh, he promised never to leave us alone uh, so sometimes a person may feel like uh, they're on islands all by themselves uh, but hallelujah I want you to know we are the children of God uh, and if I'm a children of God hallelujah thank God hallelujah I got a family I got somebody uh, that I can run to, somebody I can go to. Uh, I can run into him today. Uh, and our father wraps his arms around us, saints. Uh, he holds us, hallelujah. Uh, thank God when we feel like we are abandoned. Uh, I want you to know God looks after his children. Uh, he doesn't neglect any one of us. Uh, amen. Because all of us have the same spirit. Uh, it was Paul that tell the saints, uh, by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Uh, we all have been born again of water and the spirit uh, thank God and we have all the same rights uh, and when it comes to God and his children uh, he don't love nobody different than the other ones uh, everybody means something to God uh, and I'm so glad uh, thank God that he loves me so much and, uh, he knows my down sittings Hallelujah. Bishop, he knows our uprisings. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows what I, when I'm hurting, when I'm down. And I want you to know God, hallelujah, loves us so much because we got his spirit. He adopted us. Thank God that when I'm hurting, he'll reach down, saints. He won't leave me out there all by myself, but he'll keep us. Hallelujah. I know how you feel, Brother Gary. I want you to know tonight. Thank God that the spirit of adoption will lift you up hallelujah thank God when you're down hallelujah in the dumps the Holy Ghost will come by late in the midnight hour have you ever been there saints when you were so down thank God when nobody else was around you can call nobody bishop on the phone but you can dial heaven from your soul and I heard the Bible saying he'll come in like sea billows rolling I'm talking about the spirit of adoption that comes down late in the midnight hour. It holds us by hand. Hallelujah. I'm going to preach to myself. I've been there, saints, when, when nobody else was around. But I can look unto the hills tonight. For which come in my help, my help coming from the Lord. He's able to help you. You better stay in here and don't go nowhere. Hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Plant your feet because he's your, you are a child of the king and you will make it in we got the spirit of adoption tonight saints we got it on the inside amen it ain't going nowhere 
I don't care what nobody says. I know what I got. I know in whom I have believed. It was him that guided me, him that helped us. And we can thank God for what he's done for us. Hallelujah. Glory. Paul is saying this is a promise to us that we have the spirit of adoption. Thank God, and it calls us out. It holds us, saints. Thank God, it molds us when there's nobody else around. Praise the Lord. It gives us what we need. This is what keeps us, saints, because that which is born of the flesh is flesh. What Jesus was telling Nicodemus, as I try to close tonight, is what he was telling Nicodemus is that one birth gives you a one thing, but another birth gives you something totally different. That that's the reason why he told Nicodemus, hey amen, hallelujah, you must be born again. He was letting Nicodemus know, I cannot talk. He was letting Nicodemus know this one type of birth, hey amen, that gives you one thing. But the birth I'm trying to give you is different than this birth, hallelujah, that you got right now. No, you can't go back into your mother's womb. Hey amen, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. But there's a new birth today. Thank God called the spirit of adoption. And it brings you into some better than you ever could receive outside of Jesus. I'm talking about tonight. Thank God that brings us out and brings us in. You see, there are people out here in the cold, saints. They're walking around in this world. And this world, hallelujah, has beat them down. But I want you to thank God I'm in here, saints. Thank God I got the spirit tonight. And I'm not going nowhere. Thank God I know who Jesus is. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I know who Jesus is. And knowing who Jesus is have afforded me things I never could imagine outside of him. So Paul says tonight as I close... He says in this text, seven things blessings that are to us. And one of them is the predestination of the children of God. And it's referred to in the scriptures as the spirit of adoption. Hallelujah. What that simply means is that which was not whole. You see, orphans don't have a family. If you need to be adopted, that means you don't have a family. Are you with me today? So God took a lot of people that were outsiders, that were outcasts, thank God, that were thrown in the trash heap of life. And what did he do? He picked them up. I'm talking about spiritually now. I know I had a natural family, had a mother that loved me, had a brother, had family members. I'm not talking about that because that which is born of the flesh is flesh. But that which is born of the spirit, is spirit. There's a, I'm talking about something totally different. That's what God has given us. When he adopted us in here. So he adopted you. That means he brought you in. Out of nature. Brought you in here. Then he allowed. Of course your soul to be saved. Then he said I'm going to let you stay in this body. Till I'm done with it. Yeah. See the wind right now is blowing on our bodies. It's like, it's like a vapor. It blows on us, then eventually we're no longer. I'm not trying to be morbid tonight. I'm not trying to show, show us tonight what he's, get, what he's done for us. These bodies are temporary. If you go home and look at your body and say, it, it ain't what it used to be. But I want you to know, you can always realize inside of your body, there's a spirit of adoption. And as the wind is blowing on your body, God is blowing life into your spirit, man. He's blowing something into you that's, that's transforming you, that's changing you, that's making you, that's molding you, that's giving you life even as this body is being blown upon. Are you with me tonight? I'm going to stop screaming. God wants us to realize where our true worth lies. Our true worth saying does not lie in the body. It truly lies in the spirit of adoption that is in the body. Praise the Lord. That which God has put on the inside that gives us life even in death. Paul said it like this. It, may, it sounds like an oxymoron. He says, in one place he says, we die daily. Now that, that doesn't make any sense, does it? To the natural man. What he is saying is that we die daily, 
but I, we, we, we are renewed day by day. What he's saying is that the temporary body dies daily, but the new, what the spirit man is alive every day. The spirit, as, the spirit man as we walk with God, Sister Young, is, it, 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 how can I say, it is alive day by day while the old man dies. Praise the Lord. And so sometimes we need to understand what God has given us. God has given us something strange that is far better than anything that anybody can offer in this life. He's given you, he's given me the spirit of adoption. The Bible said we cry, Abba, Father. That's what the scripture said. Praise the Lord. Through the spirit of Christ, we cry, Abba, Father. We get a new father. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I don't like my father. Get Jesus. I'm not talking about naturally, praise the Lord, because whether we know it or not, prior to being children of God, we were children of the wicked one. Somebody said, well, Pastor, no, I wasn't. Well, you can fool yourself if you want to. I wasn't fooling myself. I wasn't saved. I wasn't not saved. But thanks be to God, I'm saved today. Why? Because of the spirit of adoption. And I switch roles. I switch families. Now I'm, a, now I'm a child of the king through the spirit of adoption. Hallelujah. Now I walk in a different family. Praise the Lord. Now I got a new way of living. And this way of living, God predestinated before the foundation of the world. He determined deacon before the world ever was made that he wanted to get something that was his. And he's working on getting it right now. And he took children that were orphans, that were foreigners, that was pilgrims, that were, hallelujah, on the outside looking in. Adopted them into his family. Saved their soul. Let their body temporarily be in the family until he's done with it. And I'm going to get mine. Praise the Lord. It's nothing in this world, saints, is worth losing what the Lord has desired to give us. There's nothing, hallelujah, there's no value that we can place on our eternity. There's no money value that can be placed on it. Hallelujah, you know why? Because there's nothing that's been created that is more valuable than the soul. Because once we come into existence, saints, we never leave out of existence. Once we come into life, we never, look, we never leave. We change from one state to another, but we never pass out of existence. Praise the Lord. So it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. We come into this life naturally, we have a body. Isn't that right? When you were, when you, when God put the spirit of life in your mother's womb, you got your soul. When you leave out of this life, you fall asleep. When you're resurrected, you get a new body. See, some people talk about, well, you know, when you get, when you get, uh, when, when we die, we going to see Jesus and, he's, and all the saints and all this type of stuff. No, you just fell asleep. Hallelujah. But if you got the spirit of adoption, are you, are you following me today? If you got the spirit of adoption, he going to wake you up one day. And say, come on, get in this new body and come on with me. <laughs> come get in this body that has been prepared for you before the foundation of the world. Come on with me. And you know, when I get it, I'm not looking for nobody but Jesus. I love you, honey. But when I get to heaven, I want to see the Lord. I don't want to see nobody else but the one that adopted me when I was outside of his will and brought me in here. I don't want to see nobody else but him. Hallelujah. Because when my work is done, hallelujah, when my work is done, I want him to say, well done, share thou good and faithful servant. All I want the Lord is to say, come on with me. You are what I wanted. Praise the Lord. And I'm coming after him. So Paul is saying this is a spiritual blessing. This is the second one. The predestination of sons is a spiritual blessing to the church. It is a blessing for us to understand that God furnished a plan for us. That's what, that's what shows us God love. 
that he went to the greatest feast to make a plan so that he can get what he wanted. He didn't have to do it, Tony, but he did. There's nothing in the Bible that said God had to have me. Hallelujah. I am a benefactor of being adopted. Praise the Lord. Now, let me give it to you like this as I try to close. I'm about to let you go. Praise the Lord. This is a little different sermon tonight. Sunday night's a little bit different, isn't it? Follow me, please. Anybody ever, heard, anybody ever went down to the Humane Society? And they have all those little animals out there, little, little doggies and cats, whatever you like. I don't know what else they, I don't know what they got down there, but in any case, those are all little prospects for families, right? And what they typically do, they try to make sure that the dogs are probably clean and they look good. They want to make sure that they, they, own, they, 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 they got them all looking good because somebody's coming in, praise the Lord, that may potentially choose them. Isn't that right? Let me tell you what God did. God predetermined beforehand that he was going to get somebody. That somebody was his church, the us. But he's given you and I the right to get ourselves ready so that we can be right for the picking. He's going to get what he wants. But he gives you and I the opportunity to make ourselves into what he desires. Are you with me? He don't have to do it, Sister Christian. But he just wants something. And all I know is that whatever he wants, I want to be. Hallelujah. I, just, I don't care about being, being whatever somebody else wants, praise the Lord, as long as I can be Sister Richard and what he wants. Because let me tell you something about this world. The world may want you one minute, but then if they see something better, what is called an upgrade. They may choose something different, but thanks be to God that I have been chosen by him. I believe that. I, I believe God... Yes, he's, he's chooses us or the church collectively, but I believe I'm going to be a part of that chosen. That's the reason why I'm living like, I don't want that. I want to make sure that whatever he is going to choose, I want to be that. Amen. Young people, listen to me. Don't worry about being somebody pick in the world. Worry about letting God be your, let, letting God choose you. Praise the Lord. See, something that we have to learn is everybody and everything is not worth being chosen for. Because they won't value who you are. God values who we are. He values what he's going to get. Praise the Lord. That's the reason why he goes to such lengths, length, Brother Levi, to, to choose and to work on what he wants. Verse number four says, before the foundation of the world. For the foundation of the world, he determined that he wanted to get something. And to prove that he wanted what he was going to get, he went to work on it. Are you with me tonight? To get what he wanted. Somebody said, if that ain't love, I don't know what it is. Because I don't offer him anything that's worth anything. But he still chose me so that I could be his. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? Who wouldn't serve a God that would choose you when you don't offer him anything and still make you the one he wants you to be? That's the God we serve. He pulls us up when we were pulling back. He takes us out when we wanted to go back. Somebody say, that's love. that's love. Praise the Lord. We didn't know which end was up, but he brought us out. Bishop, you said it all the time. That he rolled up his sleeves and reached down, pulled me out of the mire. Praise the Lord. Why did he do it? Because all he wanted was to get his children. Let me show you the love of God. I'm, I'm not going to take you to the scripture. I'm about to let you go. The scripture in the 18th chapter of the book of Matthew. And it says, who having 99 sheep and one go astray will not leave the 99 and go get that one. That's what God does for his children. He don't want anybody to be lost. Why? Because he's determined to get the adoption of sons to himself. So God will go out of his way to get the one he wanted. He will move Sandy people out of the way to get to us. 
God, did you, did you know that? He moved a lot of people out of the way just to get to us. He moved circumstances out of the way just to make it right for us to be saved. He got us in a place where we were right where he wanted us to be to get us. Are you with me today? That's love today. Who wants to be saved today? I know it's mostly us here today, but I got to stop. I'm just trying to make the, the point tonight of, the, of how important God deems his children. That he made all of this so that you and I could realize that we've been adopted. And I want you to know tonight we have to appreciate what we have. It's something about children. I'm going to tell you this is our clothes. I'm raising a few of them. I love my children. Praise the Lord. They're good children. Hallelujah. But something about children, every now and then you got to tell them, do you know what you got? Do you really know how good you have it? <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you not know that there's some people who are out in the cold? Some people haven't eaten in days. Do you really not understand how, how, how blessed you are? Hallelujah. How fortunate you are to have food on the table. You don't have to wonder, wonder where your next meal coming from. You don't have to come in the house and put clothes on. You can take your clothes off because you got heat. Huh? Are you, you following me? So it is in the natural. Sometimes it is in the spiritual. Everything God has to come by and say, don't you know what I've done for you? Don't you know how much I bless you? Don't you know how much I love you? Don't you know how much I have, I have given up for you? Don't you know that, hallelujah, you are the most important thing to me and I will go to great feasts to make sure that you have what you need? That's the God we serve. He don't leave us out in the cold, saints. He takes care of us because he loves us. Because we have been adopted into his family. And let me tell you something about adoption as I close. Adoption shows, this just came to me right now. Adoption shows a greater love. Because adoption is a choice that you make intentionally. See, some people have children they wasn't looking for children. And they got into some trouble. Hallelujah. And uh-oh, here come the baby. Are you with me? But when you adopt somebody, you make the choice that this is what I want. Are you with me? I'm not saying children is a mistake. I'm just trying to make a point. Hallelujah. God intentionally did this. So he uses the word adoption because this is what he intentionally desired to get. So think about it like this. God intentionally went out of his way to handpick me and adopt me in. He must love me. Amen. Why? Because he went out of his way to make sure I got in. Praise the Lord. Think about it like that. He went out of his way to make sure I got in here. So I'm not going to go back on my promise. Hey Amen. I'm going to make good on his commitment to me. Are you with me? Because God went to great feats to this to, this to get me. I think it's going to come at this time. I'm about to close. God has adopted us in here, saints. And I'm so glad that one day the investment that he has placed into me, he's going to make good on. He's going to make good on it. I know this was a little different sermon tonight, but still it, it drives on the point just how much he loves us, how much he's concerned about us, how much he wants us to be where he wants us to be. The songwriter said, I want to be what Jesus wants me to be. I love him today. <clears throat> I love him more because I've realized the fact that he did not have to have me, but he chose to have me. And I wasn't a mistake Hallelujah. I didn't slip up and get saved. Hallelujah. I wasn't, praise the Lord. See, nobody gets the Holy Ghost on accident. Nobody comes into the church by happenstance. It's an intentional act that God makes when he draws us.